In the mid-1950s, the revolutionary automobile arrived on American shores, capturing the imagination of an entire generation. Volkswagen's iconic bus set a new standard for compact and versatile vehicles. But across the Atlantic, automotive giants like Ford, Chrysler, and GM were already preparing to challenge this new challenger. Ford, in particular, saw an opportunity to revolutionize the market. Drawing inspiration from Volkswagen's front-wheel drive design, they set out on a journey to create a car that would not only compete, but redefine expectations. The result, the Ford Econoline. Introduced in 1961, this compact shattered conventional wisdom with its innovative design and unrivaled functionality, but its road to success was far from easy. Powered by Ford's reliable compact car drivetrains, the Econoline boasted a range of engine options for both power and efficiency. From the cab-over configuration to the mid-engine chassis, every detail was carefully designed to maximize utility and fuel efficiency for performance. However, as with any groundbreaking project, there were challenges. Ford engineers faced unexpected obstacles, from balancing weight distribution to optimizing handling. But with ingenuity and determination, they overcame each obstacle, transforming the Econoline into a true automotive marvel. Across North America, the Econoline has left its mark, offering versatility and reliability for business and family alike. From cargo vans to pickup trucks, its adaptability knew no bounds. The Econoline's influence spread even overseas. It found a home in Canada under the Mercury badge, further cementing its legacy as a symbol of innovation and progress. Join us as we delve into the remarkable history of the Ford Econoline, a vehicle that not only shaped an era, but continues to inspire future generations. When Volkswagen VW started importing its bus into the U.S. in the mid-1950s, Ford, Chrysler, and GM all took notice. They each began developing forward control vans to compete. As with VW, all three used the drivetrains from its compact cars for power. In Ford's case, it took the driveline from the Falcon and created a unibody van and pickup truck with an F100i beam front end. With the driver's compartment moved over that front axle and a 712-foot bed, it had lots of loading space and could be made very cheaply. The first generation of the Ford Econoline made its debut on September 21, 1960. Introduced for the 1961 model year as a cargo van, pickup truck, and a passenger van station bus club wagon. While introduced alongside the Chevrolet Corvair van for 1961, the Ford Econoline established many design precedents adopted by successive designs of American vans, including the Chevrolet van and Dodge A100 and the European Ford Transit. While remaining a forward control vehicle, Ford adopted a mid-engine configuration, placing the engine behind the front axle. This prevented the use of a V8 engine. Initially powered by the 85 HP 63 KW 144 cubic inch inline 6, that was the standard engine of the Falcon, the Econoline was offered with a 101 HP 75 KW 170 cubic inch inline 6 as an option. In 1965, a 240 cubic inch inline 6 became the optional engine with the 170. A three speed manual was standard with a Dagenham four-speed manual introduced for 1963 and discontinued in 1964, the 170 cubic inch engine was offered with a three-speed automatic in 1964, and the larger two engines were both offered with a three-speed automatic as an option thereafter. In line with Volkswagen, the Econoline positioned the front seats above the front axle, making it a cab-over style configuration, similar to the Jeep forward control. Other elements of its design were borrowed loosely from the Ford Thames 400E produced by Ford of Britain, the predecessor of the Ford Transit, including its grille configuration. Using a mid-engine chassis, the Econoline pickup truck saw no engine intrusion into the cargo bed. Although in 1965, with the offering of the larger 240 cubic inch engine, there was a slight intrusion into the cargo bed providing clearance for the larger transmission bell housing. The Econoline pickup was offered in two window configurations, three windows and five windows with windows in the rear cab corners to provide better visibility. Early in 1965, the pickup was offered as a spring special with a special trim package. While far shorter than an F100, the pickup was configured with a seven-foot-long cargo bed. The Econoline pickup was only produced during the first generation of production, ending production after the 1967 model year. In 1961, Ford projected the pickup leading the van in sales, however, buyer preferences weighed heavily towards the van configuration. 
the pickup accounted for only 10% of 1961 Econoline production. During testing, Ford discovered that the truck's rear had a tendency to raise up under panic stops. This caused the rear wheels to lose contact with the pavement. It got even worse at higher speeds and harder braking. The solution was to add a 165-pound weight under the back end of the truck's bead. The first-generation Econoline was sold by Ford of Canada by both Ford and Mercury. Alongside the M-Series truck line, the Mercury Econoline allowed for Ford of Canada to maximize its presence in rural areas served by either a Ford dealer or a Lincoln Mercury dealer, but not both. Largely identical to its Ford counterpart, with only minor exceptions of badging, the Mercury Econoline product line was sold as a pickup, cargo van, and passenger van. In 1961, the pickup truck commenced production at Oakville Assembly in Canada later that year. Mercury Econoline pickup production shifted to the Lorraine, Ohio Assembly plant. From 1962 to 1965, Mercury sourced Econoline vans and pickups from Oakville, with all later vehicles imported from the United States. Production numbers of Mercury Econolines were low, for example. A total of 1,291 Mercury Econoline pickup trucks were built in 1965. During 1968, Mercury ended its sale of light trucks, discontinuing the M-Series. Subsequently, the next van sold by Mercury was the 1993 Mercury Villager minivan. The Ford Econoline was designed for utility, not for style, but it still made a memorable impression on the automotive scene in the 60s and 70s. It's not difficult to guess where the inspiration probably came for the Ford Econoline from the Volkswagen Type 2 Series, which arrived in the USA in the 50s in both passenger bus and commercial truck form, selling in reasonable numbers and capturing the attention of the Motor City's product planners. Ford, Chevrolet, and Dodge would soon offer their own interpretations on the theme. Ford's contribution to the trend arrived in 1961, using Falcon drivetrain components on a simple unit construction chassis. The base 144 CD6, housed in a sheet metal box next to the driver, offered all of 85 HP, an 11 axle and leaf springs at the rear, and a beam axle and leaf springs in the front carried it down the road. The Ford E-Series formal designation was simple, light, and economical, clicking all the right boxes for value-minded buyers in the 60s, even if the styling was remarkably straightforward. At 14 feet long and just over 6 feet in width and height, it was essentially a cube. As many would say, without malice, the Econoline looked like the box it came in. Some Econolines were badged as Falcons and fitted out for passenger use in three trim level station bus, club wagon, and the deluxe club wagon above with flashy bright metal side trim. The box-like packaging supported three row seating for eight, and camper versions were also produced. The Econoline's pickup body style boasted a 7FT cargo bed, and in a 1965 spring promotion, Ford offered an Econoline pickup special with poppy red paint, Falcon wheel covers, chrome bumpers, and the wide side trim from the deluxe club wagon. Econoline commercial vans were offered with cargo doors on one side, both sides, or with doors only at the rear, along with a host of other options. Buyers who found the 144 CID and 170 CID CD CID SIGSIS inadequate could opt for the 240 C DIG 6. Starting in 1965, and that year a variant called the Supervan arrived with 18 inches of cargo box added to the rear, but without disturbing the stubby 90 in wheelbase above. Annual production for the first generation Econoline ticked along in the, the 60,000 to 80,000 range, generating a total of around 552,000 vehicles for the 61 through 67 model years. For 1968, a new and larger Econoline van was introduced, but in the 1970s, the original Econoline boxes would catch a second wind with the hippie van movement. Few automobile models survived to the five-decade mark. Changing consumer tastes, economic conditions, and competitive pressures often dictate much shorter vehicle lifespans. Among the few models that have lived to see their golden anniversary is the Ford Econoline. But after a long existence as a staple of the full-size van market, this American icon is finally giving way to a more modern, efficient, and practical successor. It would be all too easy to write another cynical article depicting the Econoline as an outdated relic born of a protected Detroit three oligarchy hostile to foreign competition. While there is some truth to this observation, it's easy to forget that the Econoline was once an innovator and has served business parks, merchants, organizations, and families with practicality and simplicity for decades. 
Here's a look at the Econoline from its introduction in the early 1960s to today as it prepares to give way to the new Ford Transit Global Van. First generation 1961 to 1967. Many retrospective articles about the Econoline mistakenly assume that the Econoline was always built on a body on frame truck chassis. While later models shared much of their equipment with the Ford F Series trucks, the first generation Econoline vans were actually based on the Ford Falcon passenger car, which ironically served as the basis for the first generation Mustang. First generation Econolines were considerably smaller than today's models, measuring a tidy 173 inches bumper to bumper, which is about the size of the average modern compact sedan. All first-generation Econoline vans were offered with six-cylinder engines. The earliest models had a 144-cubic-inch 2.4-liter inline six-cylinder engine, shared with the Falcon, coupled to a three-speed manual transmission. Later models were available with six-cylinder engines of 170 or 240 cubic inches and a choice of a three-speed manual transmission, while later models offered a three-speed automatic transmission. The passenger version was still sold as the Falcon van and could seat up to eight passengers. In addition to the cargo and passenger versions, the Econoline was also available as a pickup truck, 